Our Chien Andalou is a 1929 silent surrealist short film by Luis Benel and Salvador Dali. The movie has no plot. It consists of surrealist imagery presented in a dreamlike logic. It has since become one of the most influential films of the 1920s, influencing filmmakers such as Akira Kurosawa. Hey guys, and welcome back to Garage Movie Reviews, where we just explore random movies on my mind. Today we're going to be talking about Un Chien Andalou, which if anyone has been to film school, they have seen this movie. But why is this movie presented in film schools? That's the question. Now guys, you might know that this is a short film, and I've never reviewed a short film on this channel. Reason being is because at the end of the year, I want to do a best of 2021, and I realized that I haven't watched shit from 2021, so I figured if there's one week I should take it easy and review a short film, it should be this week. Other than that, you guys might have noticed the mustache. The month of November you grow a stash, yes, I'm aware this video is coming out in December, but uh, nonetheless I still have the stash here, and I figured while I'm still growing this glorious caterpillar on my lip. Uh, might as well talk about one of the individuals with the most iconic stash, Mr. Salvador Dali. For those of you who don't know Salvador Dali, you probably know a few of his paintings. His most famous one is probably the Melting Clocks painting, which probably everyone knows. And not many people know that Salvador Dali tried his hand at filmmaking a few times. If you're not familiar with Salvador Dali, I suggest you guys just read his Wikipedia page. That's like the most fascinating Wikipedia page you can read. Every aspect of this guy is so weird and mysterious, and that's kind of why his art is so beautiful. I think Salvador Dali is my favorite painter, so I might be biased. And another thing too that I find quite surprising is that Salvador Dali passed away in 1989. And for some reason, I always think of him as this kind of older painter, so, someone who lived in like an older time period. To see that he passed away in 1989 is a little weird to me. That's just some weird shit that's on my mind. Let's talk about the origin of this movie. So this was directed by the surrealist filmmaker Luis Benel, who also directed movies like The Exterminating Angel and stuff like that. Anyway, well... He was talking to Salvador Dali one day, and they were sharing each other's dreams. Luis Benel talked about a dream he had where a cloud was piercing through a moon, similar to how a blade would slice someone's eye. And Salvador Dali, in turn, talked about one of the dreams he had where it was a palm that was crawling with ants. And it got them talking, and they wanted to make a movie that's completely surrealist. A lot of people say that this movie doesn't have a meaning, and I feel like that's not a really strong argument. Yes, it doesn't have a plot, if that's what they mean, but to say this movie doesn't have a meaning would be false. The filmmakers said this movie was heavily influenced by psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud, and the reason for that is because there's something he mentions called psychic automation, which is you're always exposed to stimuli in your environment, conformity, uh, societal rules, morality, what goes on in your subconscious. If you were alone on a deserted island and never were exposed to society or anything, any construct of any sort, what would you be like? And that's how these two guys, their dreams, kind of molded this film. So the whole film, even though it's abstract imagery, it's playing with that concept. So I don't like it when people say there's no meaning to the movie because I just explained it right there. There is no plot to the movie though. The movie consists of bizarre imagery. Like I said, the two dreams that Benel and Dali dreamt up were in this movie. Quite famously, that eye slicing segment is in this movie and it's quite disturbing and it's very gross even today. There's a lot of back and forth into what the animal was and how they created that scene. Some people say it was a dead calf, which the filmmakers say was a dead calf, and they bleached around the eye so that the fur looks like human skin. When I watched it before reading up on that, I thought it might have been a donkey because later on in the film, you see an eyeless donkey. 
and seeing as that this was a very low budget film, I feel like might as well recycle your dead animals and use the eye of the donkey that was slit open. <laughs> That piano sequence I'm talking about with the dead donkey is a really striking image that seemed to hit resonate with me other than that slicing of the eye. Uh, I love that image. You had like this guy dragging two grand pianos with dead donkeys and the Ten Commandments were on the piano. There's this really weird scene where uh, a man is fondling a woman's breasts. It fades to her naked body then fades to her naked buttocks, and then back to her naked breasts. A lot of boob fondling. A lot of boob fondling. Should we cancel Un Chien Andalou? Kind of hard to cancel a movie that's practically in the public domain. But we should try anyway, folks. The other famous image in this film would be the moth with a skull on its back. A death moth. <laughs> So what does that all mean? What is the meaning of the dead donkeys, the eyes slitting, the moth? I mean, it's up to your interpretation. This is basically an exercise that Dolly and Benel wanted to do for themselves, relating it back to Sigmund Freud's theory of what goes on in the subconscious. That was all just an exercise, but it did, however, find a way to impact many people. Like I said in the introduction, Akira Kurosawa said that this was mo one of his most influential films, one, one of the films that had the biggest impact on his career. But other than that, when David Bowie toured with the album Station to Station, was that the name of the album? I think it was. But when he was touring that album, this short film would play at the beginning. Roger Ebert also says that this is one of, if not the first, independently made movies. The film was entirely financed by Louis Bennell's uh, mother, which is pretty interesting and probably the reason why this movie does not feel very conventional. Who would have thought that bypassing a bureaucracy in cinema would lead to very creative entertainment? So do I really connect with this movie? No, not really. I do love Dali and I love his art. And uh, we're going to talk about something Dali related in the Garage Movie Thoughts segment of this week. But I can respect this movie because... This is 1929, and these guys were way ahead of the game. So, props to that. Am I gonna, like, wanna pop up this movie on a Saturday night and tell my friends to watch Un Chien Andalou? No, probably not, but uh, I needed to watch this movie, and watched it, I did. So guys, stay tuned to Garage Movie Thoughts. We will be exploring another Salvador Dali film.